Hey everybody, the Break Kunark here. So on Yelanak, we're a couple of weeks into Kunark. Everyone's hitting level 60 around now. Uh, everyone's doing their Vicious Peak Key, they're getting their Epic Quest on. Myself, I've been working on my Green Mist, and I've taken a little bit of time off to go on a vacation or two. So today, i got another video for you. And that is to showcase a zone where you can level 50 to 60 in Kunakin, but probably shouldn't, and that is Zebelis. Welcome to TBC Plays. I'm the Brick Knock. Ruins of Knock is the first expansion for EverQuest, and I'm going to show you where to hunt, what to kill, what loot to aim for, and how to complete those hunter achievements. So, Sebelis, or as it's formerly known, Old Sebelis? So, where's New Sebelis? It, I, I, you know, I'm not a huge law buff, but this was a city that was built by Venral Sophia, whose ghost is haunting some other castle somewhere else. And he built this during the height of the Ixar Empire, the old Ixar Empire, and it was once a big stronghold for them. Their emperor died, and uh, some slaves weren't too happy about being slaves, and just constant goblin, forest giants invading, and eventually a big dragon showed up, Trakanon. There was a big battle, Trakanon got kind of wounded, kind of sort of died, but so did all the Ixar. So the Ixar kind of went, screw this, we're out of here, let's go set up a new city down the road. And that's where they are now in Cablis. Seblis is probably the first song where you will need to get a key. It's a really straightforward key to do and on a TLP it's very very easy to do because Daybreak made it super easy. Why they can't do that for some of the other Kunark keys we'll never know but getting a Seblis key it takes about two minutes. So to get the key what you'll want to do you'll want to come into Trakinon's Teeth which is the zone where Seblis is and you're going to want to kill some hunters and foragers. Now these are pretty underconned mobs. They run super super fast and they have huge aggro and there's so many of them around. But you want the medallion of the Navsar from the hunters and medallion of the Kunzar from the foragers. You're handing your two medallion pieces to Emperor Ganak in Trachydon's Teeth right down at the bottom in this kind of undead area. Uh, yeah, you just hand them in, boom, there's your key. Oh, don't forget you have to go into the open world zone before you can go into the DZ uh, via the AOC. So make sure you click into the orb. Alright, so to firstly get to Sebelis, once you've got your key, you've done your key, and now you want to go and kill some frog logs in Sebelis. You typically you're zoning from EJ because that's the nearest port, and you want to kind of run down this route. Now really important to do it in Viz because uh, mobs here, huge social aggro. A lot of the frog logs like I said are under cons just because there's so many of them. You get swarmed super super easy. Uh, they have Spirit of the Wolf on them so you, you can't outrun them and the, the amount of time people have died on the way down to Trakanon, if on the way to a group or even down to the raid it happens regularly so don't make that mistake make sure that you have some form of invis and ideally you levitate in either with dmf or with song of travel is your best bet um, as i'm doing i like to fly above the clouds way way above the trees uh, far above where the mobs can hit me and i'm generally just headed in this south eastwardly direction nothing else really to do other than run it's one of these annoying runs in kunark because the zone sizes for the most part seem to get a lot lot bigger yes we had big zones in classic mostly the karanas which very annoying to run through um or you know if you went from one direction to the other you can always use the pig zone trick to skip through them or evacuate across but tracking on teeth no look if you are a uh, melee you're going to be running and running and it's a fairly long run. And this does actually get worse in my opinion in Velius. The zone sizes again get bigger. Um, running to TOV, for example, the nearest port is like three zones away. And uh, you have to go through Simon's Grotto. And like, somebody always dies in Simon's Grotto. We know it's a relatively easy run. Um, and you can evac across. But somebody always dies. There's a few of those zones. So 
Again, it's, the zone one is not really a lot to look at. It's just a lot of trees, supposed to be some kind of jungle. You've got this old, like, aqueduct here for the old city, which is, you know, you're very cool. I, I kind of like seeing yeah, stuff like that. Um, shows that it was once a working city. And let's get under this tree layer. There we go. As we're coming now to the area of our entrance to Sabalis. And I'll show you the way I usually run when I'm going to Seb, because there's a you know, a lot to there's a it's actually like a really complex bit of the zone, probably one of the most complex bits of an outdoor zone that they've done to date uh, in EverQuest when this expansion launched. You know, um, color palette completely all washed out, washes itself out, it's very camouflaged into the. Um, into the background for the trees, the buildings, maybe that's the aesthetic they were going for, but you know, I like my old ruins to kind of stand out a little bit. Um, but usually what I do, I just keep to the edge. You know, rather than try and work my way through the maze, especially if you've got like a box or something on auto follow, just stick to the edge. That way you're not going to get stuck in anything. Um, because it's annoying enough getting stuck on trees, but getting stuck on every single building corridor. Now, when I start to get near, depending where I'm at in Kunark, I will always take a quick detour just to have a look and say hi to the pained soul. And if you've done the Vicious Peaky, uh, you know all about the pain soul. It's probably one of the most painful uh, key pieces to get. It doesn't spawn very often. Um, but I always like to say hi to him if he's up. So, oh, no, not up. Those the placeholder. You see a lot of those placeholders if you're doing the Vicious Peaking. So, yeah, you enter this building and you see this tunnel down. There we go. Nice and easy now. Mobs would have typically leashed off you if you did get aggro by this point. Uh, on the TLP, the age of change will be right here for the. Sebelis zone, and here we go to get into Sebelis. We click the orb, and we zone in. As easy as that, we are in Sebelis. So, oh, some of the mobs you're going to be fighting in Seb is actually a little bit varied. Firstly, there's some scarabs, they're the easiest mobs in the zone, they don't really do a lot. Make great druid pets though, so uh, pick one up if you are a druid because these things are now class as animals. And then the bulk of the zone is these dudes, froglocks, and there's a whole lot of them. And it's kind of interesting in that there's like a hierarchy system to them based on their name. You can typically tell how high up they are, I guess, and their level range just from the name, starting with the gins, uh, the dars and the box are going to be the lowest level ones, and it's going up to the reeds, and finally the illis wizards um, are, are the ones are the highest. Uh, illis wizards make really good pets. Down in the undead area, there are some undead frog logs. I just kind of forgot to put one in, um, but you're going to find the revenants and uh, kind of thing, the skeletons, the imperial crypt guardians. Watch out for them because they like to complete heal forever. And then the Mushroom Men. Oh, I have stories about these Mushroom Men. Um, you're going to be seeing a lot of them if you're down in the King camp. Uh, Reavers uh, usually make the best pets if you're going to pet them. Watch out though for the Preets and especially the Adepts because uh, they're healers and they like to complete heal. So when you see that going off, you really need to be stunning them. And then the jugs. If you're going to go down to the jugs camp, you're going to see jugs. They're big, they're brutish. They don't do a lot except be really big and hit you. Um, easy tank and spanks. Just pull them in, let them hit on your tank and burn them down. Nothing really else to say. Oh, and there's a huge dragon that lives down here as well. And that's the undead dragon tracking on. Uh, interesting model. I hadn't actually noticed it was like partially skeletalized the guest uh, previously I'd always known him as having lots and lots of teeth now it's time to take a look at some of the camps that you will be hunting at in Sebelis starting off at the entrance always check some of these mobs around because some of them do seem viz if you're gonna be running down to a camp just always worth just giving them a con double checking and seeing if they can see you I like to go as 
high in the roof as they can to avoid some of the aggro. Watch out for these two sneaky ones here because they can see him this as well. And the two by the door. When you come down you'll find there's another bunch here. It's usually thinking there's two or three. And again they can see him this. And then there's a couple more down here. There's three. There's one hiding behind the rock and they can also be seeing this as well. So the first camp that we come to is going to be bugs and this wide area here is the camp spot. You'll be parking up here, pulling all the frog logs around from the exit over there and that entrance cubby as well. Um, really safe spot. I think there's only one roamer that can path through so it's a nice little entry to Sebelis. And you'll be mainly pulling some of these bugs that spawn here. There can be a named bug up there too. And down towards the crypt. This is where you'll be pulling from. And you can see the golem up there. And it's usually where you stop because you're going to need someone to open the door. Nice easy pulls. Uh, most of these stuff slow level. It's not one of my favourite XP spots. Because the pulls are long. I like to keep my pulls short so that I'm always killing. Um majority of your pulls are going to be from this side of the bridge as well just be careful not to fall down because you will have to zone out and then back in to get back to your group so this is kind of like the freeway once you know how to get here you can get to a whole bunch of different camps this way will take you down to the disco camp a very famous camp and that is disco lots of name mobs in here as well and lots of density which is why it's one of my favorite places to go if I'm leveling up in Seb in my 40s why do we call it disco well it kind of looks like they're having a disco in here it looks like a little nightclub of frog logs with the stage and this is usually where groups camp right on this platform. Not one of my favourite places to camp because you could have a pull. And if you're not watching respawns, well, then you've got five frog logs on you that are respawning. So um, I like to park up a group in one of the side rooms, usually more towards Disco 2. There's lots of rooms going off to the side as well where you can pull from, where a couple of names spawn. So again, much better than bugs because there's a lot more density really close to where you want to be camping. Like, you, you, there's like lots of mobs, there's short poles, um, which is why I think it's a decent camp spot. It's probably one of my favourite spots to come to when I come to Sebelis. You know, a little torture chamber room back here as well, hidden behind a fake wall in the library. Be sure to pull that because that's where Brog spawns. Now, if you're coming from P99 on a TLP, uh, this is actually one camp. It is not two. Um, Disco 2 is not, in my opinion, a, uh, a viable camp in and of itself. Especially on TLP. We, we kill faster than you do on P99. This is all one camp. So if someone tries to tell you two on Yelenak or on another TLP, they are wrong. It is definitely one. But a good one to come to, and you'll often see groups there. Um, it's one of the camps that people really try and push for. And then the next camp we go to, if we go back to that freeway, is the kind of opposite side of the bridge. So remember this way, this was our freeway. The path from entrance is just there where those three frogs are, but we're not going that way. We're going to go this way over the bridge. It's quite a long run to this camp. It's not as short as Disco, but hey, there's mobs on the way, which is good because killing mobs gives us XP. There's a little jail in here as well, as well, where you can find a few naughty Ixar necromancers that are being caged up by the frog logs. So follow it down all the way around. You come to another little area here, a little platform. But still, we're not at the camp yet. We're still killing our way. We go down this corridor, open the door, take a right, and the usual camp people will sit at is this one right here, this room, because again, lack of pathers, this dude jumping towards us right now is kind of like the only one and that's about as close as he gets so it's super super safe um, around here lots of rooms to pull from as well and lots of names you got this little cool little bar who knew the froglers would have a bar but they do in Cerberus and there's even a bartender and just 
because it, the room that you want around the corner from a bar is going to be the armourer's room and again not a lot going on but the, you see there's there's lots of little rooms with three or four frogs in at a time so your group's going to be busy like killing the frogs and you come down here um, the camp is known as ABC armourer, bartender and chef and the chef spawns in this room as well there he is, he's actually up Froglog chef. He's just hanging around. No kitchen for him to work in, but he still likes to be a chef. All of the same. Lots of doors, though. That's annoying. I always have to wait for doors. And I always struggle to open them. I don't know why. Alright, we're back at the freeway again, and we're going to go to the next camp. So right here, you'll see a the bugs camp, but we're going to skip past it. That's not where we're going. Pick up a pet here if you're a druid. Because there won't be any more further down. And you're going to come right here. And we're going to go in the crypt. But you will need a bard or a rogue to open this door. Because it is locked. So there's no key. Bard or rogue are the only ones I can do. And we're going to pull around to the, the camp. There's lots of undead frog logs right here. So Through the door. This is where you'll probably want to pick up a pet. Necros you want. One skeletons, not a frog. Uh, watch out for these two Imperial Crypt Guardians. They are no pushover. They will complete heal each other uh, all the time. And they seem to have a never-ending mana pool. And this is where you'll find the boxes in that room. More on that later. Um, every one of these rooms can have a uh, named. Your mileage may vary on whether the loot is any good, but that's where you'll find them. There's four in total with four placeholders. Um, you typically camp in that room and then you're pulling all the way through. What some groups do is when they're coming down here, the groups will kind of move and kind of loop around. So it's not like crazy long pulls. I, I have seen that happen. Be mindful not to lose your camp though. Get the duke. And finally, you're going to here, and this is the Emperor's room, and you'll be pulling all of that, um, and then looping back round once you are done. So that's it for the camps that are at like the top layer, I like to say, of Sebelis. Now we have to go basically through the bottom layer, which is through the sewers, because of course it is. We're gonna go from. Here, down, always take the tunnel on the right. I don't know why, but oh, we always go right. Um, and it's going to bug through. I don't know why. I'm, always seems to go really, really fast through water. But there you go. Into these like little cells. There's one path outside, but it's no big deal. I just stick in this on. And then we are going to go down the second tunnel all the way through. You come into the jail area. Um, wait here for your groups. So you all together. They can be seen if it's up as well. And this is the path we're going to go towards the King Camp. That uh, little like floaty uh, orb thing in the back, that's the zone out. That'll take you right back to the orb outside. And kind of come around here and this will take you into the King Camp. One of the top tier camps for loot in... Seb and not really one for XP. You can XP here, the mushroom men are alright. But right here is where you're gonna camp. Reason being no pathers again, or maybe one. Um now pulling this camp. You have to be so careful pulling this camp because the pathing is awful in these caves. And I mean truly, truly awful. You have to be really careful what direction that you pull in first because you pull the wrong mob, it's going to run the long way around, aggro all his friends, and you're going to have a big, big problem uh, at your group, and your CCs are going to have to be ready, because you can have six or eight of these guys running in at once. So, my recommendation, if your group is here, always start from the kind of east side, the, the right side. So, if you're looking at the map right now, I would start pulling from the east and not the west reason being if you pull from the from the west especially that kind of southwest area the mob will run all the way around that bottom path to get back to your camp they won't take the short path for some reason they will not do that 
Um, you can stand right next to them and they will go run, run, run around this long, long path all the way to your group, aggroing all their friends along the way. But if you start on the right and clear that way around, you, you're going to be fine. So just be wary of that and be mindful of that if you are going to be pulling the mushroom men. Then the final camp, if we're starting from that little entrance way to the mushroom men on the map, we're going to go to Jugs and this is how you kind of get there um this is our track kill spot right here um that's the way you can get back but unless you have left you're not going to go through that way you're going to come around this way take a left and when you start seeing jugs you know you're in the right spot so this little bench right here is kind of like the staging area or the prep area to kind of clear the way towards the actual camp this is a weird door with um, we had to click that fire pot to open it You can click it through the door as well There's some rooms to the side a couple of frog hogs in but we're gonna clear through Say hi to the jugs Again more of these kind of long windy corridors with not a lot happening on them maybe one or two puffers and Right here on this little ledge here is the camp this is where your groups can be set, set it up jugs is a really good camp to get spells you'll get loads and loads of spells it's okay for um xp not brilliant it's just nowhere near the level of jardock really is um your pullers are going to be coming up and pulling all the way up the top here where taller is the, the jugs and this is where tracking on lives uh, my advice is if you are coming to this camp, do not do it in the main pick because you can have a tracking on surprise on you and your group's going to wipe, you don't want that. I'd always come to a pick because tracking on does not spawn in picks. Well, time to look at some of the mobs you'll need to kill in order to get 100 achievement and what loot you can get. Now, there's a lot of loot like, like this one right here, this kind of class armor with uh, abilities like spells and stuff like that. I'm not going to list every single one because there's so much of it, but there are some good ones and they can drop from a whole range of mobs here. So be quick because mobs like this, then the Krosis Scarab at the bug camp can drop some for you as well. Grupplinor is over in disco and drops a cool little robe right there definitely a robe from back in the day and probably useful for some people right now if you didn't get up to the planes there's a bunch of mobs here that drop sub like scale armor and the frog log ostry is one of those as well still in disco the frenzied pox scarab well he's gonna drop this kind of spear you might want to pick it up shamans if you don't have your epic yet like i said a lot of this stuff you can only replace it very very quick my friend brog hidden away behind the library in disco right there we had to go behind a fake wall to find him he again drops some of this like fun like toy armor um, sets that some are useful because it you know saves a spell gem you don't have to mem it Others are kind of not so useful. Also dropped this book, which is kind of nice as a secondary item. Uh, decent amount of Vintum Wiz. And this um, AC HP shield as well. The CGS, a very famous item from back in the day. Everybody wanted to have a CGS. Not so much D-Days, but it's still a lot of AC and a whole whack of HP too. And you can get that from Brog if you're lucky. Uh, another one of these awesome kind of named mobs, uh, in my opinion, the frog log pickler. What's he pickling? I don't know, probably those brains in the jars behind him. Um, this is the stuff you can get for him, some of the usual stuff that you see. The fun armor, the sebelite scale um, is what you'll be getting from the pickler. And this chest item as well, which is a bit different. Still in Disco, we have the Frog Log Commander, Stinging Steel Bracer. It's something that he drops for the bards out there for a clicky. Uh, he wanders around. It can be a bit of a pain to, to pin down because he does wander this corridor between the two. And the face item as well with some Wiz HP and all that kind of good stuff for Wizcasters.
finally leaving disco and heading on over to ABC as the bartender. His loot's terrible, but he is a hunter achievement and can I have a pint please, Gavna? Also at ABC is the best named in the zone, maybe in all of Kunark, and that is Froggy. Daybreak, when are we gonna get a Froggy server? Yeah, it's gotta happen. We've given us Viniki, Froggy deserves one too, surely. He's been down here in Sebelis. Next year, let's get let's make it happen. Froggy server 2023. Armsman's over here as well. He's got a weapon. The cleric, you're not gonna be using it because you're gonna have your epic at this point, right? And interestingly, he's in his bedroom. We kill him in his bedroom and not in the armory. Fancy that. Someone who's not in, in his bedroom is the Froglog Repairer, and he drops more of this Seb skill armor as well. The Froglog Chef, he's down here right at the very, very end as well. Um, and you're going to want to kill him for his Hunter achievement, and that's about it. Could you not put a little Chef's hat on him? Over to the Crypt, Arafant Prime Grekel. This room will have three magicians that are perma camps in it that never move, that don't respond to anything, that send the pet in every 15 minutes or whatever the respawn is to kill either the placeholder or a higher prime, prime Grekel for this cloak because it's so good. I'm lucky enough to have one on Yelanak already. I got it kind of day two of the server. Every time I go into Sebelis, this has AFK magicians at it, just doing auto clicking pet attack. Super annoying, what can you do? Uh, maybe you can take the count from them. But don't train. That's breaking TOS and Daybreak don't like it, even if you're training bots that have been there for 26 hours without moving, only ever sending pet attack in uh, every 15 minutes or so. So don't train them, ever. Don't do that. That breaks toss. Just saying it how it is. The other names down in the crypt are just not on that level. Archduke Ayatol, he drops a club. It's got the same effects as the short sword of your Kesha from Lord Gook. Why would you have it at this point? You wouldn't. Ah, Binger Freglaw. He drops a box, and I like box. I like bag space, so yeah, win for me. Baron Yosig drops the journeyman's walking stick. Uh, it's got an effect of Tash on it, which is interesting what about the only thing that's interesting about it uh it's a twin kite more than anything else chottle has lost his blood where is it it's right here hiding in this crypt and he drops cone of the mystics it's probably his best one um primary though that is the thing it's a primary so you're gonna have your epic there as opposed to anything else You've made it to the end of the crypt, you've killed his blood and now it's time to kill Emperor Shuttle himself who drops this weird hammer with negative stats. I never like to put negative stats on it. I don't know why it exists, but it does. He also drops a great sword as well, the Nafsar great sword. Now, again, this is something you should see a lot of back in the day when epics were much much harder to get and I'm guessing that's why a lot of these weapons kind of exist and certainly why a lot of the weapons in Vision's Peak exist to kind of fill that gap of giving players something new but on TLPs epics are so easy to get so warriors, paladins, rangers, shadow knights, bards you are going to have your epic and you're not going to need that. Ripped Caretaker, someone's been keeping up looking after this place keeping it clean scooping up all the junk and that's a Crypt Caretaker and he drops his mantle, it's all right, and more of this kind of class clicky armor as well. I always like it when they put in like one-off mobs in zones, even if we've seen it a million times before. It just gives you something different to look at. All hail the Myconid Spore King, because you're going to be seeing a lot of robe of living fungus. Because that's all he drops. Done. Moving on. Next. You're going to see a lot of them. Robe of living fungus. You don't want it, but you're going to get it. You're going to see him up and you'll raise your hopes because you want this. But no, you'll get a robe of living fungus. But the fungi staff, you know, everybody kind of wants one. Really good in monks and necros. Really good in kind of everyone. Um, always try and get one because that clicky out of the bag is so, so good because it gives you that regen. It does slow you down, but the regen's really, really good. Um, 
I think it does negate some of the dots as well. And Gunnar Convelius, really good on Twinks too. You just kind of kill forever with these Fungus Regrowth. And the other one you want is the Tunic as well because of that HP region at 12. So, so good, especially at lower levels. Put that on a level 1 and you're going to fly with a Fungi Stick. You know, a Monk with both of those is just awesome to play. So much fun. But you're not going to see them. You're going to see the World of Living Fungus. Or you're going to see three Necros AFK here, killing him over and over and over again. Rono Camp. Gotta love it. Oh, what have we stumbled on here? A group of AFK pots killing the king over and over. You're going to see this a lot, let's be honest. The Sebelite Guardian. I mean, you're coming uh, to Jugs mainly for the spells, but if you see this guy, he drops the Lammy. Again, a famous item from... Circa 2000, everybody had one of these. They were good items back then. These days, not so much. But, you know, pick it up for a twink. It's a really good item to have on an alt or a box. He drops a bow too. Hold a plumch. Well, if you think I'm struggling with names now, just wait until luckily in our gates of discord. Tola plumge drops a robe. Tola plumge's robe. Which is an interesting road caster, but with a ton of haste. So if you'd be a melee caster um, and hit the mobs, which you should, because there's still some good DPS you can do sometimes, pick it up. Also really good on enchanter pets. And what does he do? He also drops another stuff as well, because there's not enough of it in this expansion. But this one's not very good at all. No stats on it whatsoever. The Sebelite Protector, the absolute beast of a big boy compared to the other. You thought the other jugs were big. No, no, no. This is the big daddy. He drops his nice little bracelet. It's all right. A little bit of stats on it. And yet another two-arm blunt with no stats on. Yay, Sebelite Protector. Outside of that, there are some drops that pretty much just come from trash. Uh, such as the Death Shroud, which is a nice little shoulder item, and the uh, RBG, the Room Lady Girdle, which is especially good because there are not that many hay spells outside the sky, and this is not a bad one whatsoever, and will easily sell for 2 free chrono on a TLP fresh into Kunark. And I was lucky enough on Yelenak, I was just started killing in Seblis, and second, third. Frogger kill dropped an RPG, so winner was me, happy days. Uh, it was definitely an upgrade on what I was wearing, which was the FPSS. Quests of Zebelis. Kind of weird in that you'd think there'd be lots, but no, not really. There's not really much to do. Um, if you're after getting the Spirit Right card, then you're going to need a Undead Dragon Sinew that can either drop from a track or from a jug. Although, whether you just want to go camp the drop itself from Chardock, uh, if you feel like winning the lottery, you can do that. Otherwise, you can do the quest and part that you will need to get the Sinew. It is a rare drop from the jugs. And I'll touch on some of these quickly because they, they are quite involved quests and a lot more fun, but sometimes the rewards kind of don't match the effort and this is one of, like that, the uh, War Staff of the Righteous quest and part of that is a huge quest chain um, and you're going to need the sap from one of the Mushroom Men. I, I really like these Kunark Archaeology quests that were added back into the game around 2017-2018. I think it gives you something to do and achieve in like where we're at now on the Yelenak, for example, which is late stage Kunark, where there's not all that much else to do because you've done your VP key, you've done your epic, you've leveled up. Um, and like I said, there's a whole bunch of these. Uh, this is some of the other stuff that you can get as well. Like this one is for a sword. It's probably one of the more unique looking swords in the game. It kind of looks like you're holding two little Christmas trees. And again, a long quest and you're going to need a spine in order to progress it. It's for Kugrex Blade. You know, this will have you running around to even killing Finny. Like, so these are quite how weird some of these quests can be. They can sing to Nurga, to Fear on a V, to the Hall to Skyfire and then kill Finny. Well, that's all I've really 
got on Sebless. Um, video was a lot later coming out than what I had hoped. I had a couple of vacations and then unfortunately came down with the uh, the dreaded virus which knocked me out of action for a week or so. Um, but Sebless is, is really... It's not a zone that I'd level up in or I'd spend a considerable amount of time leveling up in. Having said that, I am doing it for some of my alts on Yelenak because they've already got Chardock faction and I don't want to screw that up. I really like having Chardock faction and uh, being able to run around that zone like without any aggro is is some of the best um, activities and fun I, I have while while playing on a server in, in Kunark. You know, going in, sniping the mobs that I want without any risk, without any like chance of uh, uh, wiping or you know, huge trains being completely unaffected on me. So I am actually spending a little bit more time in Seb than what I probably thought I was going to do. Um, now when I'm like playing alts or boxes, I, um, I really don't like to um, go to like the Spore King area, like the Mushroom Man area, until I have like Call the Hero, because running a few boxes down through those tunnels, through the water, is is so annoying. Um, it, it it gets old very very quick, and then you have to run them all through in the water. You know you can't use follow, so I like to wait till I got Call the Hero before venturing further down, which means staying. At like disco or ABC until 55 and it really does start to slow down after 53 54 but most of the time I'm, I'm here for loot anyway I'm here to get spells get gems and maybe get a shot at a um, an ODS or a rune blade girdle as well I you know, I've got lucky on those and if you do then that's chrono in the bank um, I, I, I like the fact that the zone like, is split up. There are very de like definite camps you know, with different areas with different mobs. There doesn't tend to be a lot of like contentious kind of um, like, uh, pulling going on. And what I mean by that, like groups stepping on each other's toes, because you are so far apart. Like a good king group might start pulling some jugs. But they'd have to be a very good group if they're clearing for all the content, all, the, all like the mushrooms, uh, probably with multiple charm pets and stuff like that. Otherwise, there's always a group at jugs as well. Um, you know, there's only room for one group at ABC. There's only really one, room, you know, room for one group at bugs. Um, so I'd say if you're boxing, um, you want a bit, a bit more chill, then Cerberus is probably better. And certainly for me, like I said, I want to preserve my Chardock faction. Other than that, it's kind of like more the same. There's nothing all that unique about the zone. The mobs, most of them we've seen before the models, there's nothing that stand out there other than a big undead dragon in Trakanon who um, is an interesting fight in and of himself. And um, I, I one, of, one of my favorite areas actually is this area here, right? The, the crypt. Uh, because it is you know, your locked door, there's undead down there. These undead, for some weird reason, give huge faction hits. Um, you know, positive hits on the live frog logs in Gook. Um, the rest of the frog logs only give one, one faction. But when you kill the undead frog logs, they give 25 live frog log faction. Don't know why. Um, not all that useful at this point, but there is an item later on uh, that you'll be able to do if you have faction with the frog logs in Guk. But other than that, that's about all I have. So if you've watched the video, thanks so much for making it through. I do have more videos coming out. You know, we've got a few more weeks of Kunart left. And maybe I want to do a video on what you know some of the fun that I've had on Yelenak. And to be honest, the most rewarding thing that I've done outside of the epic was probably the Green Mist quest. So maybe I can show you that and how you know I kind of went about it and how I did it because um, I did it as a as a dark elf, so I did have to spend some time for actioning and, and whatnot. But it was fun to get green mist complete. Um, so maybe I'll showcase that, and then we'll start looking ahead at some of the uh, what we will be seeing in Velius on Yelenak. 
So, yeah, thank you if you watched the video. Uh, feel free to hit the like and subscribe. It really is appreciated and it really does make a difference. So, um, anyone that does that, you know, big thumbs up for me. I you know, can't thank you enough. Um, if you're interested in the guild we've got going on Yellowknack and you're a Pacific Time player and you like to play when the kids are in bed or whatnot, um, look up the guild link below. Um, we're more than happy to have you join our raid team or if you just want to be a casual member. Other than that, I am the Brit Canuck and I hope that you have a fantastic day.